Hi YouTube, in this video I will be explaining how to install a 50 amp 3 wire range outlet. This is our outlet, this is our 50 amp 3 wire range outlet. Now, this is a 50 amp 4 wire range outlet. So, either outlet could be used for any residential stove or range. The only difference is, is with the uh, 50 amp 3 wire range outlet, uh, there's no spot on it for the ground to land. On the 50 amp 4 wire range outlet, there's a spot on it for a ground to land. That's the difference in the two. In this video, we will specifically be dealing with installing the 50 amp 3 wire range outlet now let me add this if you have a gas stove or a gas range this video doesn't apply to you these outlets the outlets that i just showed you there are 240 volt outlets and if you have a gas stove or a gas range residential gas stove or residential gas range you don't need a 240 volt outlet you just need a regular 120 volt outlet for a gas stove or a gas range. So now let's get started. Now, this is our three wire 50 amp range outlet. Now, this is the front of our outlet. This is where our uh, cord actually plugs in. Okay, this is the back of our outlet. This is where the terminations are made. So you'll have two hots, they land here on top. And then you'll have the one neutral lands here on the bottom. So you have two hots that land on it, turn the 40 volt uh, outlet, two hots, and you'll have the one neutral. And you will not land the ground on the outlet. Okay? Now let's take a look at our box. These are our wires that terminate on our outlet. So you have two hots, the red and the black. There'll be our two highs. And you have the white, it'll be our neutral. And you may and may not have a ground in your box. In most old houses like they were built back in the 1950s, you may not have a ground wire. But on most newer houses that's built today, you would definitely have a ground wire. Okay, now at the other end of these wires in the electrical panel, this these two highs, this black and this red will be terminated on a 50 amp breaker. This white wire will be on the neutral bar. And if you have a ground, it'll be on the ground bar. In some old houses, you'll find that the neutral bar and the ground bar is the same bar. So now we're ready to get started. Okay, so let's look at the back of our outlet. Just like I said, the two top screws, if you're holding the outlet straight up, uh, not upside down. If you're holding it straight up, the two uh, top screws would be your hots, and the bottom screw would be your neutral. You would also be able to tell what screw is your neutral by on the very bottom underneath the screw, uh, you'll see the word white and the word blanco. That tells us that our white neutral wire lands here. So what you do is you slide the wires in these little tiny holes and you tuck the screws down. So we are ready to get started. I'll start with my neutral. I'll just take it. He's, oh, these wires are, they're number uh, eight wires and they're pretty hard to deal with. They, they're real, you know, it's, they're not flexible. So you may have to work on bending them. Uh, so I'll just terminate my neutral. I'll slide it in the hole and I'll tighten down. Okay, my neutral's terminated. I like to pull on it to make sure it's good and terminated. Now, let's terminate our black. It doesn't matter which wire terminates on which screw, just as long as you have a hot on the each screw. So I'll take my black, I'll terminate it. Now again, these wires are they're really, really hard to deal with. 
All right, I'll tighten down. All right, now, okay. Then I'll take my red. Hot. Oh, come on. Okay. This is kind of hard, but I got it. And then I'll tighten down. Okay. So I got all three wires tightened down under the screws here. I uh, got the black, got the white, and I got the red. Now, if you have a ground, if you have a ground, you, what you want to do with that ground in this plastic box, if you have a ground, you want to push that ground all the way to the back. You don't want to terminate that ground anywhere on this outlet. I've seen people terminate those grounds along with the neutral. You don't do that. You want to push it all the way to the back out of the way of these screws because if this bare copper ground come in contact with these screws, it'll trip the circuit breaker. So you want to make sure to keep that ground in the back. You may even want to take extra precaution and put black tape over the screws. That way you don't have to worry about the ground coming in contact with these screws, okay? Now, if you were using a metal box, so we're using a plastic box, you just push that ground all the way in the back. If you were using a metal box like this box, I hope you can see it. What you do with your ground is you tap it to the box. You, you put a bun jump in the box, the green wire is the bun jumper, and you tap your ground coming from your panel to that uh, ground coming from your box. That way you can ground the metal box. But what we have here is a plastic box, so we don't have to worry about it. We just push our ground all the way to the back. Okay, now we're ready to terminate our uh, outlet. This, this wire there again is really, really not unflexible. I got my drill to speed up the process. Uh, got my drill. Speed the process. Up. All right. One. It's two. Excuse me, have some problems here. Three. And four. Okay, now we'll put on our cover. Okay. Got this little tiny Monday morning screwdriver here so that I don't drop the screws. And that's okay. So that is how you will install a three wire, 50 amp range slash stove outlet. 
I hope you can find this video beneficial and I thank you for watching.